So let's consider a more complicated gate and see how we can size transistors for delay in this gate. This gate now consists of multiple independent CMOS gates connected together so that we want to implement a very complicated function F and we have partitioned it into three components F1, F2 and F3 which are then used as inputs and combined together in the gate F through a three input NOR. The givens of the problem are that CGN node, CGP node, CDN node and CDP node are all equal to C0 and that inputs and their complements are available without additional inverters so you don't have to worry about whether it's uh, better to implement the expression of f or the expression of f bar it is always better to implement the expression of f bar in this case we are required to size all the gates so that the pull up and pull down resistance in the worst case is equal to that of the unit inverter in gates f1 f2 and f3 but that this resistance is equal to half of that of the unit inverter in gate F. And then we are required to find the delay from the inputs A to the output F. So we first start by implementing the four gates, F1, F2, F3, and F. The gate F1 is in an AND gate, AB. And so F1 bar is A bar plus B bar. And so when we look at the implementation, it's A bar plus B bar. And the pull-up network, we have a series connection of A bar and B bar. Do not forget that if A and B are given to the pull-down network, then give A and B to the pull-up network. If A bar and B bar are given to the pull-down network, then give them to the pull-up network. Now let's look at the expression of F2. F2 is CD plus E bar. And so F2 is CD plus E bar. F2 bar is going to be um, C bar plus D bar into E. And so the pull down network is going to be E into C bar plus D bar. And in the pull up network we have D in parallel with, we have E in parallel with a branch with C bar and D bar. Again, we don't have to worry about transistor count for uh, the bars because we know that they are available without additional uh, additional inverters. So F1 and this is F2 and F3 is equal to Z into H plus I all bar. So F3 bar is going to be G into H plus I. Now actually this is the exact same architecture of gate F2 except with different logic inputs but it's the same connections right. So we have uh, G into H plus I, which gives us this connection in the pull-up network. And in the pull-down network, we have, um, we have um, G into H plus I. And therefore, we get at the output F3. The gate F, which is the big gate that combines F1, F2, and F3, is a three input NOR, and so F is F1 plus F2 plus F3 all bar and F bar is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3 which is a three input NOR that we can implement fairly simply. So we have F1, F2 and F3. In the pull-up network we have a serious connection of the two, uh, three PMOS transistors and again F1, F2 and F3. And we get F at the output. Now let's do the sizing. Um, for the first gate F1, the worst case pull down uh, resistance will be either through uh, transistor A bar or B bar. So each will be sized at one. In the pull up, we have only one branch consisting of two series transistors. So size each of them at four. For the uh, network F2, we have a single branch of two transistors in the pull down network through E and C bar. So each transistor will be sized at 2. But what if the branch E D bar was activated? Then D bar also has to be 2. In the pull-up network, we have two different branches, either through E, in which case the transistor E needs to be sized at 2, or through C and, bar and D bar, which are in series, and therefore each of them should be 4. The network F3 is identical to the network F2, and therefore will have the same sizing, even though it has different uh, input variables. The uh, three input NOR, a gate F, 
will have three different uh, paths in the pull-down network. But recall that in the problem, we required that the worst case pull-down and pull-up resistance in the gate F is half of that, uh, half that of F1, F2, and F3. And therefore, the, the aspect ratio W over L should be double that of F1, F2, and F3. And therefore, uh, each NMOS transistor has to be sized at W over L equals 2. Uh, the 3P MOS transistors in the pull-up network are together in series, have to provide us with an aspect ratio of 2. Now, uh, that means that each of them has to be, uh, actually they have to provide us with an aspect ratio, an equivalent aspect ratio of 4, not 2, because we require the resistance in the pull-up network to be half that of the unit inverter. And so each of them has to be sized at 12, so that 12 over 3 is equal to 4. And this is the sizing. So now we are required to find uh, the total time constant of the circuit or the total delay of the circuit. Now, this circuit consists of a first stage, which is F1, F2, and F3, and they all operate in parallel, and then the main gate F. So what is the delay in this case? The delay from inputs A, B, C, D through I to the output F is going to consist of the delay of the second gate, which is TP, F, plus the maximum of the first three delays, TF1, TF2, and TF3. Why the maximum? Because all three of them are in parallel with each other. And therefore, when we try to estimate the delay of a network consisting of multiple gates, we have to be aware of how these gates are connected to each other. And so to calculate the total time constant or the total delay, we have to find the delays of uh, points F1, F2, and F3, and then find the maximum of them and add it to the time constant at, uh, in the gate F. So to find the time constant of gate F first, which is the easiest, let's look at gate F. Gate F has a loading capacitance at the output node of um, 12 plus 6, which is 18 C naught. Note that gate F is not connected to anything at its output, so its loading is entirely going to be self-loading. The delay in the pull-down network on the pull-up network, and when we say delay, we always mean worst-case delay is going to be R0 over 2. So it's always going to be R0 over 2 because this is how we sized it to be, right? And thus the time constant is going to be 9 R0 C0. And this is the worst case time constant in the pull down or the pull up. Now, if we look at um, node F3 and we try to figure out what the time constant for the output F3 is, we have to go back to this network and notice that F3 is also connected to the input of gate F. And this is very important because now F3 is also loaded with an external capacitance that comes from the input F3 to the gate F. And therefore, loading capacitance consists of two components. The self-loading, which comes from this transistor, this transistor, and this transistor, and amounts to 8C0, plus an output capacitance that consists of this transistor and this transistor, and is 14C0. And therefore, don't forget that there is loading from the next stage and that this loading comes from both an NMOS transistor and a PMOS transistor. The worst case resistance in this gate is R0 by design and therefore tau is 22 R0 C0. For gate F2 we also have to find the loading capacitance including capacitance from, late, uh, from gate uh, F which is going to amount to 22 C0 for a time constant of 22 R0 C0. For gate F1 we have an internal capacitance of 6 C0 and an output capacitance of 14 C0 for a total loading capacitance of 20 C0 and a time constant of 20 R0 C0. And therefore, if we look at the entire picture, we find that the time constant or the delay from beginning to end is going to be 0.69 times either this or this time constant, which is 22 R0 C0, plus the time constant of the gate F, which is 9 R0 C0. Therefore, this will be the total delay through the chain. So in conclusion, in chains, we have to be aware of how they are connected before we can calculate their total delay. Total delay always happens from the very first input into the chain to the very last input into the chain, and you always care about the worst case.